Hi all, I have a very interesting attacking game to show you of Leela Chess against Stockfish 9, believe it or not, the mighty Stockfish 9. This is against Leela ID 504. So we've gone over the 500 ID mark. Uh, E4, this is a three minute time control, two second increments, I believe. So E4 from Stockfish 9. We have E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, and the classic Roy Lopez. A6, Bishop A4, and now D6, which is the old Steinitz variation. Funny enough, I played white earlier in the over the board season uh, this year, 2018, against a grandmaster, Jonathan Hawkins. Uh, so that's the strongest of Hendon Chess Club. Hendon won, and like the strongest player, one of the strongest players. Uh, so a former British champion. He played D6, and this has actually got quite a bit of venom. For a start, if white tries to blast black, there's an underlying trap called the Noah's Ark trap, which goes like this, D4, B5, then taking on D4. And then if white takes on D4 here, can you, have you seen the Noah's Ark trap? I hope you have. It's C5, believe it or not, and after Queen D5, which looks as though it's really good, hitting F7 and A8, there's Bishop E6, Queen C6 check, Bishop D7, Queen goes back, but now C4 trapping the bishop. Yeah, so there's Noah's Ark trap uh, as an undertone here, but uh, that's not why you, one would play this necessarily. I feel one would play this to try and get a sort of King's Indian defense style attack. Uh, you know, with Finn chatting the bishop and a, and a pawn storm on the king's side, uh, because quite often I've been playing G6, but maybe this. This is a maybe this is a safer way if you want to play for a King's Engine style attack to play a6 and then d6. Uh, we'll see from the evidence of this game as well. C3 is now played by Stockfish, so avoiding the Noah's Ark trap for sure. Knight f6, d4, bishop d7. So it still seems energetic play from white, bishop c2, and now g6. So this is what I mean. Black. Uh, is going to play now after d5 closing the center. Black is going to play for a kingside pawn storm potentially, but with the center closed, it is it has that king's Indian style feel to the position, especially with c4 now. Uh, this bishop's not usually on c2 in king's Indian lines. It's usually on e2. Bishop g7, both sides castle. So we literally have what looks to be almost a king's Indian style uh, defense position. Knight c3, but actually black is poised here to att actually attack on the queen side. Uh, an interesting move, b5, because the bishop's usually here. It's actually usually stopping b5. If the bishop's here, it's reinforcing the b5 square. Black is actually threatening, uh, maybe to undermine a bit white's control of e4. We have b3. If c takes, this activates the rook, of course. And is not too desirable. Black can even play b4 here as a pin, as an example, and then even hit the center harder on e4 like this with a small edge. So white actually cautiously plays b3, and we have knight h5. And I feel these positions are beautifully flowing. It's it's kind of a naturalness of the attack here. F5, not even worried about knight g5 to e6. Sometimes this is a concern in King's Engine games. Uh, I think Fisher against Timonov in their 1972 lead up, 1971 lead up to the uh, World Championship. Um, Fisher was on the King's Engine side, and there was this knight g5 to e6. Uh, but here it's it's not dead. It's not such a good uh, idea in this position because let's have a look. B4, a5. If the knight goes in as a kind of way of weakening, like on the light squares. Uh, knight f6 as an example black ends up slightly better this pawn can be taken black ends up slightly better but i don't think there's enough compensation for white to do that so white didn't go for this uh knight g5 bishop d2 we have knight f6 a3 you might think well what about e takes maybe g takes is better than anything else to cover the e4 square and then this position is okay for black Black has a small edge technically. So a3, h6 now, queen e2, b takes, b takes, and now f4. So we have here what seems to be 
typical King's Engine defense style play on both sides. G5, C6. This does release some tension. Bishop drops back. H3, G4. It looks as though Black's pretty aggressive here already, though. This looks a little bit more aggressive uh, than usual by King's Engine defense standards. Uh, so Knight takes here, Knight B1. A5, with the possibility even of Bishop A6, which would cover an escape square of the king. Bishop C3, Knight G6, Knight BD2. The king goes to H8, so the possibilities of using the G file are more evident. Bishop D3, Rook G8. So it seems Leela's play is very human-like. It's very attractive to me. It's very flowing and natural. White's play, Stockfish's play, literally does seem the product of brute force. Uh, calculation. It's a case sometimes, maybe just philosophically, that internal quality or internal style quality reflects the external quality or external style. And that's why I love the Leela chess games. They have a natural, beautiful human style to them. And if you look at the internal quality, the whole neural network approach, it's very different from brute force chess engines. Uh, in many respects, it reminds me you know, of Chernov's most instructive games of chess. I always found those fascinating, but he picked big themes which had depth to them, like connected past pawns and and other, you know, king safety, which are evident. These themes are, are also pronounced in Leela chess when she plays against brute force engines. Anything which is very deep, you know, which incremental depth can't handle. It's very interesting conceptually, usually. Now here, this, this G-file attack... The flowingness of the G file is very, very interesting for me conceptually, and it's an for me an easy to play kind of style. Queen e8, Black's just building up a lot of attacking potential here. So Queen g6, f3. This seems to be a very, very dangerous position already, extremely dangerous. So f3 seems very de desperate. It looks as though White's busted really here after knight e3. Knight takes, f takes, rook a2. We have bishop h3, just everything's being attack attacking now. g2 nearly. f4. Now here we see the move queen g3. Very, very dangerous indeed. Queen f1. Rook a, f8 supporting the bishop, so now there's even the possibility of taking on f4, supporting that bishop. f5, closing things down again, trying to close things down. But alas, bishop g5 with the big threat of bishop f4. Rook bb2, bishop f4. White's just helpless here. This must be one of the most crushing games of Stockfish 9. Absolutely helpless play. White has to give up the queen. And it's, it's all over, basically. It was adjudicated here. This game does have a beautiful smoothness about it, as Morris Ashley would say <laughs> about the, about Magnus Carlsen games sometimes. No, it was a wonderfully smooth win. Uh, one out of many games, though, a set of many games. But it's incredible if Leela can actually beat the top brute force chess engines in such a smooth manner like this game. But it's also, for me, a, a good effort for the... For the uh, Steinitz defense, the modern Steinitz defense, with that d6 move after a6, uh, d6. To get a Kings in style position like this is a dream come true for me personally. And as a bonus, there's a Noah's Ark trap which your opponents could fall for. So maybe an interesting opening to try out in one's games. Okay, comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.